Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printy here. In today's video, I want to cover how to do method-based dispatching in Flask. So if you're familiar with Django, then you know that Django does this in class-based views. Well, you can actually do this in Flask as well if you choose to do so. And the reason why you will wanna do this is for organization purposes. So instead of having different functions for each possible method on a single endpoint, you can have a single class and then inside of that class, you're going to have different methods to represent each request method. So let me show you how this is done. I have the documentation up here. What I'll do is I will create an app here. So from Flask import Flask, of course, and I'm also going to import method view from Flask views. So from flask.views import method view. And then I'll just get the Flask app started. And instead of using app.route like I usually do, instead I'm going to create a class. So I'm going to call this class, uh, let's say an animal class. So animal is going to represent uh, some kind of group of endpoints that deal with animals. So for instance, get, you can get an animal, post, you can add an animal, put, you can modify an animal. I'm not gonna make the methods actually work that way. These are just going to be dummies, but that's the idea behind the name. So with the method view approach, instead of defining each individual route that I want, I create a class and then inside the class I define the methods that are available for the eventual endpoint that's going to get created. So I have get, I have post, I have put, and I have delete. So this is pretty good for an API if you want to use it for an API, but if you just want to organize things a little bit better and just use get and post, you can do the same. So of course in Flask, each a view function needs to return something. So in this case, I'll return a string in each. So return, returned an animal. For posts, I'll say created an animal. For put, I'll say modified an animal. And for delete, I'll say deleted an animal. Okay, there we go. So my class is complete. And basically the only thing I need to do is create an endpoint for this class. And then it's going to create the rest for me. So if you look here, all you have to do is use this add URL rule here. You pass in an endpoint. So in this particular case, it's users, but I'm going to use animal. And then you pass the view function. So you just say um, the class as a view. And that's kind of similar to what Django does. So app add URL rule. This is going to be on slash animal. And then the view function, since it's not a function, I have to kind of convert this class to a function uh, through what Flask gives me. So animal as view, and I'll just call it animal. And then with all that, I can actually run my app. So let me start up a virtual environment. and then go to the desktop and export flask app equals run.py and then I'll run the flask app. So flask run and we see my server has started on 127.001. Uh, this is the local host. So I'll go to postman to try this out and I have my URL here already. If I send a request to just the base URL with no endpoint, I get this 404 not found. That's because I don't have anything on the index. But if I go to slash animal and I hit send, I see returned an animal. And then if I change the method, so post, I see created an animal, uh, put, modified an animal. And if I go to delete, I have deleted an animal. And of course, if I use a method that doesn't exist, we'll get another error. We get a 405 error saying method is not allowed. So you can see that through that one class, I can use those four different methods on the same endpoint to get different things. And all I had to do was create the method with the name of the method 
so the class method with the name of the request method that I want to use. It's kind of weird that they both mean method, but in this particular case is nice that they both mean the same thing because your method is going to be the method that you want. So get post, put, delete, and of course, if I wanted to use any of these other methods like patch or purge I could but you know the first five here are the most common that you would use and of course the first two are the two that you use nearly all the time so just one other thing here in the documentation they talk about decorating views uh, one disadvantage to this approach is when you have a decorator everything in here has to get decorated so you can't just say that only the post gets decorated with something and not the other three if you want to decorate something here everything gets decorated and let's say you wanted to use something like flask login and you know you have the login required decorator then you would specify a decorators attribute here and then you'd pass in login required so it's not like decorating a uh, function where you would have login required here. Instead, you pass the decorators in here, this list just like that, and it gets applied to all of the method methods in here. So if you wanna have different decorators for each method, then you have to separate it out and create a different class. So everything in that class uses the same decorator. But if you're not using decorators or if everything has the same decorator, then this may be a good approach for you because it just organizes things in a slightly different way. And you may prefer this way of organizing your request methods and routes for a particular endpoint. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, if you have any questions about this, you can always ask in the comments below if um, you feel like you need help with something. Um, if you haven't checked out my website already, just go to prettyprinted.com. I have four Flask courses, uh, Flask for Beginners, the Flask Extensions course, Flask Sequel Alchemy Basics, and Intro to Flask. So you can just go to my website and you can see that there. There's going to be a link in the description below as well. Um, I have other courses if you're interested in those. So just check out the website um, if you want to learn Flask in a more structured way. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my to my channel already, please subscribe and thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.